the atomic mass is an average of weighted average of all the masses of the natural occurring isotopes. As we see, for example, there are isotopes of um, lithium, there are two isotopes for carbon, there are three, oxygen, and so and so. So I'm going to teach you now how to calculate a um, weight average for the masses. In order to do this, instead of doing like a normal average, we need to know the masses. So for example, here we have chlorine 35. The mass is 34.97 and the abundance is 75.76. So what do we do? This is a percentage, correct? So what we're going to do is take that 75.76 and divided by 100. That number will be multiplied by the mass of that particular isotope. We're going to do the same with the other isotope. This is the percentage. We divide that by 100 and multiply that by the mass of the other isotope. These values that we obtain here are going now to be added and this is the weighted average mass of chlorine. Please be aware that you're going to have a problem like this in the exam. Electrons um, are, as we, as we mentioned before, they are in uh, outside the nucleus and they are moving around. So this movement of the electrons is the one that is going to determine the physical and the chemical properties of the atoms. The electrons are arranged in energy levels, and each energy level has a principal quantum number, n. So higher the value of n, farther away these electrons are going to be from the nucleus, and higher in energy these electrons will be. We have, um, for each level of energy, we're going to have sublevels. And these sublevels contain electrons that have identical energy. The sublevels are identified with S, P, D, and F. S is the one with the lowest energy level, and F is the one with the highest energy level. The number of sublevels in a level energy is equal to the value of the principal number. Um, n. So for example, for n equal 1, we have one sublevel. For n equal 2, we have two sublevels. n equal 3, 3. n equal 4, 4. What sublevels? For n equal 1, we only have s. For n equal 2, we have the s and the p. For 3, we have s, p, and d. And for 4, we have s, p, D and F. Each electron sub level is an orbital, and this, are, this is just a region where there is a very high probability of finding the electron. We can put a maximum of two electrons in each orbital. So, for example, the S orbital looks like a sphere. Higher the n value, bigger the radius of the sphere and uh, larger the orbital will be. The p orbital looks like this. We have three, one in the x, one in the y, and one in the z. Therefore, each orbital can hold two, and since we have three, we can put a maximum of six electrons in the p orbital. The d orbital, we have one, two, three, four, and five. Therefore, in each orbital we can put two, therefore we can put a maximum of ten electrons in the d orbital. And for the f orbital we have seven. Seven times two is fourteen. In the f orbital we can put a maximum of fourteen electrons. So, for the s level we can put a maximum of two electrons because we only have one orbital. P, a maximum of C, D, a maximum of uh, 10 electrons.
So what we're going to learn now is the electron configuration. We're going to start always with the first orbital. There we go and it's the first orbital is going to be the 1s. For example, for hydrogen, it only has one electron, so the orbital, because we only have one, so we use this box over here, we put one electron in there. Helium now has two electrons. We still have one orbital, but we put one electron going up, one electron going down. Please notice that we don't do this. We don't do this, right? We put one electron going up and one electron going down. The orbitals are going to be uh, go forming from the smallest, lowest energy level to the highest energy level. So we start with the S, then we move to the P's, then we go to the D's, and like that. So if we take a look of this periodic table here that we just um, have, by doing the uh, walking around the periodic table, we can predict the um, electronic configuration of all the atoms. So for example, if we have an element that is in this group over here, we know that its last electrons are going to be in the S. So for example, let's do carbon. Carbon has six electrons because the, its atomic number is six is neutral, six electrons and six protons. So when we do the electron configuration of carbon, we do one, two in the S, two in the two S, and then we put one and two, one in each of the P. Now, notice that you are going to put one electron in each box before you start pairing these electrons, okay? So let's take a look of nitrogen. Nitrogen has um, seven. So when we do nitrogen, we do one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Again, you put one in each before you start pairing. And for fluorine, we have um, for fluorine we have. Nine, so it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The electron configuration is a list of all how these electrons are arranged. For for example, what we're gonna use is as I show you in the lecture, we're gonna grab one S, two S. 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. And we're going to go in this direction. So for example, for carbon, that it has six electrons, we'll grab one s. How many can we put there? Two. That's the first level. Then the second will be two s. How many can we put there? 2 and then the next one is 2p and we have to put there 2, 4 and 6. When you add all these is equal to the number of uh, electrons in the neutral atom. For example if we do calcium, calcium has 20 so we're going to do the same. Go here it will be um, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 4s2. 